Hello there. Thank you for joining us on TVC News Hour. I am Mike Okwache. And I'm Ngozi Alebu. The headlines. Early morning fire at Kefi Main Market destroys goods worth millions of naira. And striking academic staff Union of Polytechnics to resume talks with federal government in January. Outside Nigeria, Gatwick Airport runway reopens after it was closed for one day because of drone chaos. And in sports, 4,000 runners register for the 2019 Lagos City Marathon. And thanks for staying with us. An early morning fire at the Kefi main market in Nasarawa state has left shop owners devastated in its wake. Goods and properties worth millions of naira have been destroyed. Now this is the fifth time the incident is happening in five years. The incident often happened every December. TVC News correspondent Godwin Aguam joins us now uh, on the news to give us updates on this. Godwin, it's good to have you on right now. Uh, can you tell us what is the cause of this fire. It, we understand that it happens, uh, this is the fifth time it's happening. Yeah, um, thank you very much. You see, uh, we can't really say for now what exactly is the cost of the fire, uh, but what we can say is that the Kepi May market got a fire in the early hours of today, destroying goods and properties worth millions of naira. This is not the first time the incident is occurring. In the past five years, the market has been gotten fire every December which makes the situation mysterious. Many feel that uh, the incident is, um, is man-made as it attracts government intervention each time it occurs. Uh, the last time, uh, like early this year, the governor was there to review the, review the um, market which got a fire last December. And it, in that last, when it happened last December, it destroyed a lot of properties and goods. And the governor had to intervene and uh, help um, to cushion the effect of the hardship on the the traders there in the market. But here again, it's happening again in December 2018. It has become a, a reoccurrence in the market that every December such a uh, fire incident usually happens. And so now, as we speak, now it's unclear whether the government will be willing to come to their aid given the circumstances that surround the incident. Uh, it's very curious, Godwin, that this happens every year. Uh, what measures have you been able to uh, find out, if any, have been put in place to prevent uh, reoccurrence? Um, for now, we can't tell if, uh, because the government, the last time the government um, um, rebuilt the market, they were able to give them some fire extinguishers and other um, um, firefighting um, machinery or machines to fight the, uh, the fire. But this time around, the, 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 the mysterious thing about this fire is this. That it happens in the midnight when people are sick, when nobody will be able to come in to assist or help. And that's what's been happening in the past five years. And so for now, we can't tell um, what the, the cause of this inferno really is. All right, talk to us about the level of damage. What's the level of uh, impact of the fire on the market? Well, for now, um, we could see some shops that have been destroyed. Goods worth millions of naira have been destroyed and raised down by the fire. And uh, for now, we can't really ascertain the amount of uh, goods that have been destroyed, but we can say a lot of goods, what millions of naira have been destroyed in the market. Uh, of course, this happened in midnight. Um, what, I mean, is there anybody from government that has visited the fire, uh, um, the scene of the fire incident, of course, the market? All right, for well, now, the person who has visited the, um, the place is um, just the chairman of the Kefi local government. That's where the market is situated. Um, which is a Meguru, he went there and uh, he sympathized with the marketers and the traders who were there. He described the situation as unfortunate. And um, although he said that they are yet to ascertain the cause of the incident, and um, for now he won't be able to speak much on the issue until they are able to ascertain the cost, the actual cause of the infinite. All right, uh, talk to us. Since this is the fifth time this is happening, is there any stationing of fire service close to the market in order to forestall any kind of occurrences like this? Uh, for now, there is none, but we, there's the National State Fire Service, which usually is stationed by for any um, um, emergency fire incident in the state. So it is believed that when such fire incidents occur, they inform the fire um, uh, fighters here, and they go, go down to the place of incident to fight the fire. 
But unfortunately, just like I said earlier, these incidents usually occur in the midnight when nobody or when everybody's already asleep and nobody will be able to come in to help. Hmm. All right, uh, Godwin Aguam, a reporter there uh, on uh, the fire incident in uh, Nasarawa main market there. Thank you very much for joining us. The Zamfara State Police Command says it has recovered the bodies of five persons killed by armed bandits in Gidan Halilu village. Police spokesperson Mohammed Shehu, who confirmed the attack, says normalcy has been restored in the area. The command says it has mobilized teams of police mobile force and counter-terrorism unit and conventional personnel headed by the area commander, Akaura Namoda Police Area Command, to the affected community. He appealed to residents to remain vigilant and report any suspicious movements uh, to the nearest police station uh, for prompt action. Uh, TVC News' Ibrahim Bello joined us earlier on the news. Association of uh, cow sailors, uh, petroleum tankers, the Zamfara State Government has banned the sales of uh, petroleum outside uh, filling stations. They banned the sales of uh, cows uh, except in some designated markets. All these efforts were put together to ensure that uh, the issue of uh, armed banditry has, uh, has come to an end in the state. Special Intelligence Response Team have arrested the Boko Haram mastermind responsible for the 2015 bombings in Kujia and Nyanya that killed at least 15 people in Abuja. The suspect, identified as Umar Abdul Abdul Malik, was arrested on Thursday while recovering from gunshot wounds he sustained in the shootout with the police units three weeks ago in Abuja. The arrest was confirmed by the force public relations officer, Jimon Moshud, who said the suspect will be paraded to the media very soon. Now, according to the IRT operative, one-eyed Abdul Malik is the mastermind of the Abuja bombings, as well as the gang leader of a string of bank robberies in Edo and Ondo State, as well as multiple killings in Abuja and Kogi State. TVC News senior crime correspondent joins us now to uh, discuss more on this, Ivy Kanu. Ivy, it's good to have you join us. Good afternoon. All right, now the, the, let, let's start it this way. Uh, a lot of, when we heard the news of uh, the Abdul Malik being arrested, a lot of people were, were quite happy when it, when, uh, when it comes to knowing that he was behind some of these killings. What, what did you hear well, well, from um, this? You see, Abdul Malik mm. Umar, 39, has, is a very notorious Boko Haram leader. He's actually called the commander. Most of the bombs that were used for the bombing of Nyanya, Kuche, and the rest was supplied by Abdul Malik. Mm. So he's been on the wanted list for over since 2015. And um, they had, there was a gun, a, a, a gun battle with the police, so I, so I gathered, and he ran into Lagos. So they've been on his trail since then. Now he went to Moe. We heard the sister is a nurse. She was treating him for uh, gunshot wounds mm. when, when, when they, they, they caught him. Now, for such, such huge success for the Nigerian, I think for the security uh, force, exactly. not just Nigerian mm. police force, but because I'm sure the DSS and Must the rest, Must have been involved they, been with involved, the police, joint you know? uh, security operation. So, so it, it's, it's a huge catch for them. Okay. And from what I also gathered, the, the suspects that were already picked up for the bombing of 2015 and the rest, mm. all fingers pointed to this commander. Mm. So it's been difficult reaching Uma. Now, how was he, tra I mean, uh, tracked? How, what, what, how much uh, intel was available to the, to the police and all the other security agencies? Of course, you may not want to reveal, uh, you know, but how, how was he tracked okay, to uh, uh, Moe? There are several ways you, you know, that the uh, security agencies uh, can actually track anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure they probably his phone. You can always track these people. Yes. But mm -hmm. you know that he left Abuja and was able to get into Lagos. Now, uh, for me as a crime reporter, mm -hmm. how did he pass through checkpoints? He to had get to Lagos. To get to Lagos mm -hmm. all the way from, or did he fly into Lagos? He had gunshot wounds, so I, I, it's obvious yeah. he won't be flying because yeah. uh, if he has that kind of uh, wound and, and so on. No, the, but, implication, but, the, but the implications too would be that there's some level of safe haven for him to have come to Lagos. 
Right anyway, there. he was coming How? to see his sister. Uh -huh. So who else? Yeah, you know, it, it's uh, the family members usually for these people are the first place they will always run to when they have mm. such this mm. thing. And for Uma, you know, the, the game is up. I, I think they will be flying him any moment from now, from to Lagos to Abuja. To Abuja All right. Now, talk, talk to us. Uh, I know you've, you must have spoken to people. Now, in a situation like this where a commander in Boko Haram finds his way to Lagos, what are Lagosians saying? That he was, even, he was able to get to anywhere close to Lagos? You see, uh, when we talk about Boko Haram penetrating Lagos, uh, for those of us that cover security, we know that the, there have been instances where some places, even in Ojota, mm -hmm. in uh, certain places have been stormed and they've caught some of these okay. people. Mm -hmm. Some you're allowed to go with cameras, some you're not allowed to go because they don't want to send panic, right. you understand? The sensitivity yes. of the... Yes, of in, the uh, okay. because if you, if, you, if you realize that your next door neighbor is trying to <laughs> explosive and the rest inside his house, mm -hmm. That's enough panic, and you know, so let, they've been able to manage it. Mm -hmm. But this shows that we still th there's still a lot to be done around mm -hmm. Lagos. All Absolutely. right, thank you very much, Ivy Kanu, uh, senior crime correspondent. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, right. and I'm sure you'll be staying on this. We certainly will. will get more information <laughs> as, as they come out. Yeah. Moving on now, the Independent National Electric Commission has expressed concern over the lingering ASU strike. INEX says it will defect its preparations for the 2019 elections. The electoral body will deploy more than one million ad hoc staff made up of lecturers in federal tertiary institutions, members of the National Youth Service Corps, and students of federal tertiary institutions in the elections. But the commission expressed fear that the elections could be impacted negatively if the strike was not called off urgently. And uh, there may be light at the end of the tunnel for students of polytechnics in the country because the union would resume talks with the federal government in January. The striking academic staff union of polytechnics, ASUP, says it will continue discussions aimed at resolving the ongoing crisis. The national president of ASUP, Usman Dutse, said the meeting is important because the last meeting held on Monday was inconclusive. He said the union would continue with its strike until they are satisfied with the offer from the government. The Polytechnic teachers began an indefinite strike on December 12th over non-implementation of several agreements by the federal government. ASUB Zone C coordinator Lawale joined us earlier on the news. At what point have we been agitating for this? That is one side. The other side is all of these agitations are not all centers around money. Getting assent to the Polytechnic Act, does that require so much money? Release of the condition of service that is outdated in the Polytechnic subsector, does that require money? Now, when we're saying we don't have money, are we all those states that are hoeing salary? in the state-owned institution, non-implementation of promotion exercise for three years. Does that really require money that the government cannot handle? Because people are on duty working. And we should also not forget that this same set of people in question, they have families, friends, and their own career to take care of. So the issue of no money does not center us around all our agitation. That's still to come on TVC News Hour. The UN General Assembly has adopted its first ever resolution addressing poverty eradication in rural areas, underlining the importance of concerted efforts to achieve the 2030 Agenda Goals. You're watching TVC News Hour. Governorship candidate of the Action Democratic Party in Lagos State, Babatunde Badamosi, has pledged to assist victims of a Bulegba area pipeline fire incident. Mr. Badamosi told some of the victims at the site of the recent explosion that the list of those who suffered losses was being collated to enable him to work on how they could be assisted. He also called on well-meaning Nigerians to assist the victims in any way they can, stating that those of them who incurred losses were not even part of the syndicate that perpetrated the crime. Petroleum pipeline, and they've camouflaged it like a shop, and they've dug through the ground into the pipeline and uh, just basically sabotaged it, all in the effort to, you know, make money illegally. 
at the end of the day, if people were more gainfully employed, if more people were not losing their jobs, we got the figures from the uh, National Bureau of Statistics the other day that 20.9 million Nigerians are now out of their jobs. Now, 10% of the population of Nigeria roughly lives in Lagos State. Actually, over 10% of the population of Nigeria lives in Lagos State. It stands to reason that more than 10% of the people of Lagos State are probably out of their jobs now. The latest, more depressing information that we got was that the merger of uh, Access Bank and Diamond Bank has resulted in the loss of about 1,000 jobs and a closure of about 100 uh, branches. The Inspector General of Police has deployed a special team to Nasarawa State to investigate the killing of former Defence Staff Air Chief Marshal Alex Bade. This was announced in a statement issued by the spokesperson of the Nasarawa State Police Command, Kennedy Idrisu. And TVC News Sifon Esien is at the site where the former defense staff, uh, chief of defense staff, was killed. Sifon Esien, uh, good to have you on the news. Uh, what can you tell us uh, about um, filtering information as to what may have led uh, to the killing of former chief of defense staff? Uh, well, we don't have as much information yet, expecting the authorities to uh, make that available. But right now we're in Zango. That's actually the name of the village where the former chief of defense staff was killed. Just a few meters behind me, that's where he was shot dead. Um, as you can see, uh, not much of a village behind me. It's just a bush, a stretch of bush, and the highway leading to just uh, on this side of the road. So, but before we got here, we passed the military checkpoint, which is about three kilometers to this place. And um, the soldiers actually told us, OK, come in quickly and leave as soon as you can because a patrol had made its way in here and they are still picking bits and pieces of information to try to put the puzzle together uh, in talking about the investigation into what would have caused the death of the uh, chief former chief of defense staff all right Sifon, talk to us uh, what are the concerns within the military about uh, attacks on senior military officials uh, g g uh, general uh, or Air Vice Marshal uh, Bade is not the first of uh, senior, very senior, high-ranking military officers that have been killed in recent times. What is the military doing about this generally? Well, in, in spite of um, a couple of three, three, four months, senior, very senior military officers have been killed. The other time, our colleague, General Akali, retired, was killed. Actually, he had made his way into Jos and was headed out of the city. Two days ago, we had the uh, Nigerian Air Force headquarters where the chief of the air staff expressed his anger, uh, you know, that uh, this has happened to a distinguished um, military officer who had completed his career. And uh, he pledged to work with law enforcement uh, agents to ensure those behind this heinous crime are brought to book. There is concern in the, in the military hierarchy that uh, this will be happening to people who are putting uh, lots of service uh, for fatherland. That I can confirm, lots of concern. But how they will turn that into action in terms of tracking down those behind it, bringing them to book as a deterrent for any other person who may want to attend this is what we are waiting to see. And of course, we hear there's a manhunt for the, you know, the, the killers of the uh, former chief of defense uh, staff. Um, uh, any news about his friend who was abducted by the said uh, killers and of course the driver who is said to have survived uh, this um, attempt? Well, um, the information we got a while ago, say about three hours ago from the Nigerian Air Force indicates that the man who was shot in the leg is actually uh, recuperating but for those that, that particular person who was taken or abducted as it appears um, his whereabouts is yet unknown it's part of the investigation and uh, the military and indeed other law enforcement agents are in the bushes and also you know trying to work out solve the problem put the puzzle together to get to the tail end and find out uh, those behind this dastardly act and to put them, bring them to book. All right, uh, Sifon, I, 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 will, I, I would like to tell, can you tell your cameraman to pan so we can see, because people like to see the view of the area that you are, so we can have a better understanding of the area that you are standing right okay, now. Let, let me take two steps backwards so uh -huh. you have a better view exactly. of the area 
where we are, you know, it's just a stretch of the road. This road comes from Kefi Drive and it goes down straight to Plato, uh, Joss, uh, the capital of Plato State. And you have several villages, and this is Zango, where the incident actually happened. It just, it's a stretch of road, bush to the right, bush to the left. You don't seem to see, have a feel of any um, structure in terms of settlement around here. It's an open land. And we discovered that there are several farms along this route. And the information we got was that uh, the former CDS was actually coming from his farm. But if you see the number of farms, he actually confirms that is actually true because there are several farms. The particular one which belongs to him is what we do not yet know. But that's the situation you can find actually here. Vehicles zooming past and no one actually waiting because well, we're told that it's safer to drive at top speed along this road yeah. to avoid any untoward activity by exactly, criminals. Exactly why you know, one would want to ask the question as to how vulnerable this Kefi uh, Abuja road is. Uh, you know, to um, armed robbery or, you know, such um, attacks. Just behind me, about uh, three kilometers, you have a military checkpoint. And if you go down this way, about four kilometers, another checkpoint. In between these two checkpoints, you just have um, manageable roads, uh, although not in very good shape. And um, a few settlements to the right and to the left, which you cannot see right now. And a few spots where you have... Um, it's a little market, well, appears to be a market, you know, where they sell yams. Apart from that, you don't get to see any other thing. Okay, now, we're getting to see, okay, yes, now we're getting to see what appears to be a yam market and people standing by the road. Actually, I spoke to that man a lot earlier. He's actually waiting for a vehicle to head towards Joss uh, in Plateau State. That's the feel you get along this road. Every vehicle plan this road is at top speed to ensure the make it through this road to their destination safely. No one wants to stop. That's but, the situation we, uh, and that's the experience we have on this road. Yeah, Sifon, we understand the police, the uh, IG of police has deployed uh, a special team of the police force to go to Nasrawa State uh, as part of the investigation. Uh, we want to know, besides the police, are there other agencies, security agencies, maybe the military, as part of the joint effort, or is it just the police doing that? Uh, well, you know, the police is the lead agency tasked with um, internal security. So they have to be in the forefront of this um, investigation. But then this happened to a former air chief. Of course, you know, the special forces of the Nigerian Air Force are on top of their game. And the chief of the air staff has pledged that he's going to work with the police and indeed other law enforcement agents. Of course, the DSS. Um, whose responsibility it is to gather intelligence will also be at their game. So this is a litmus test as it appears for the law enforcement agency in this collaborative effort in ensuring that they get to um, fish out those responsible for this uh, killing and to bring them to book. Yeah, thank you very much, Sifon Sien, our correspondent there, trying to make sense of what may have led to the killing of the former uh, Chief of Defence Staff right there on the Kefi uh, Abuja Road. Thank you very much, Sifon Sien, for joining us. Moving on, the chairman of the All Progressives Congress in Imo State, Daniel Nwafo, has described the dissolution of the party's executive as an action capable of threatening the peace of the party. Mwafo believes the current APC executive in the state remains legitimate until a court of competent jurisdiction proves otherwise. Imo APC is intact. Under my leadership, we will continue to work to make sure that the party wins all elections, all elections. And um, we urge the public, we all Nigerians, to disregard the reckless statements from Mr. Adam Sushomila, his co-host, saying that our party has been dissolved. It is not true until a court of appeal judgment overrules this judgment, we are intact, we are valid, we are duly constituted executive members of this party at all levels, and we will work to deliver all our candidates irrespective of the activities of Mr. Adam Sushomole. 
The federal government have been urged to address problems associated with education development in Nigeria. Teachers revealed this at the grand finale of the government-owned inter-high school debate in Obokun local government area of Oshun State. They want government to make debate and quiz competitions compulsory for students of government secondary schools in Oshun State to help in developing their minds. I am quite impressed by what I have seen today, contrary to people's opinion about public schools. I think we have seen them putting up their best, but their best can be improved on. I think the parents home too, if the home could join hands with the school, will have a better result of, from what we have today. We need to begin to give them platforms to express themselves. Let's know the content of what they believe in. Uh, this will, I believe, will help them to be independent, will help them to be creative in knowing what to do. Well, education in Nigeria is uh, on the slumber side of life and that has uh, been shown by the currently going on industrial actions by ASU and the Polytechnic lecturers. The education sector and the proposed budget allocated to the ministry is of interest to many Nigerians at this time owing to the fact that uh, virtually every union in the sector is either on strike or planning to do so. And TVC News sought the opinions of some Nigerians on this matter. Since they budgeted higher something last year, I think the best thing is to give us something higher than that of last year. That will help the, uh, the economy. So I don't know how they can do it, but that's lower something. It won't help. Even the agitation from the ASU alone, they should at least be able to double up the budget this time around, not reducing what compared to what they, what they, what they budgeted last year. I think federal government should increase the money. Otherwise, there will be a lot of strike again. Already, as a strike, they need to be paid well so that they really work and it will make the education sector to be better than before. I want the government to just have to look onto the budget of that education because things are turning hard now. For a school fees to be paid, many as to strike, 2020, 2019 budget will be higher than the 2018 budget and he has to look up to it. Things are not like the same. It should be increased. Even with the 2019 budget that they said it is a, the allocation for education is higher than that of 2019. We are not feeling it. It should be, it should be increased. Teachers are the, are, are the least paid in this, in, this, uh, in this nation. And you know, it's seriously affecting everybody. It's affecting them and it will still continue to affect the educational sector. Education is a legacy. It's very important in person's life. So the government should see to it that uh, they should be able to increase their salary so that the people will have their keen interest in doing the job. If they were not fully paid, you know, people may, will be able to have a second thought. They will not be able to handle the work like it's supposed to be. We want them to take more action, more action, mainly on the education sector before getting too long because this strike is causing a lot of um, a lot of uh, damage to our youth or especially our students federal government doesn't have diplomacies in mind as far as education is concerned it's only themselves they know they are voting very low to education of this country because they know that it won't affect their children in any way so the budget for next year, what they budgeted for for education is so low. So that indicates that they are not even expecting anything from the education sector in this country. We should work more on developing um, every criteria for students' management and make sure things work well for students. Ondo State Government says it is intensifying efforts to make roads in Ondo State safe for movement. The State Commissioner for Works, Taufik Abdul Salam, made this known while inspecting some ongoing road constructions in Akure, the state capital. The Commissioner added that despite the paucity of funds, the present administration in the state is committed to work on infrastructural deficit across 18 local government areas of the state. Should be on the neck of the contractors so that. Uh, they will still work within the frame time we give them and the way things are now we are still on course 
and uh, will continue to be here always so that uh, they can do what they need to do. And as we are visiting every day, new innovations are coming up. And that's the sense of uh, supervising your job. And uh, the earth was almost completed. Uh, this road could have been open and completed this month, but because of the caring period for the for the hydraulic structures, you can see we have two major covers, one at the section and one up there. So we need like 21, 20 days for curing, which will be completed the 20 days, we are the 20 days early January. So after then, the lay of the same base will commence, followed by bad course and the wearing course. But by God's grace, all things being equal, by February, before February, uh, second year anniversary, this section will be, will be completed. You're watching TVC News R. We'll return with more on the news when we come back after this break. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. The UN General Assembly has adopted its first ever resolution addressing poverty eradication in rural areas, underlining the importance of concerted efforts to achieve the 2030 Agenda Goals. The resolution noted that nearly 80% of the extreme poor live in rural areas and, of course, on agriculture and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development uh, 2030 it makes it a priority to end poverty. The resolution also asked the UN Secretary General to submit a report to the 74th session of the UN General Assembly next year in order to add the topic of poverty eradication in rural areas to the agenda. Gatwick Airport runway has been reopened the day after it was shut down because drones were seen over the airfield. Passengers flying in and out of London Gatwick faced a lot, at least 24 hours of disruption, a situation that has caused delays to thousands of Christmas travellers. Under British law, it is illegal to fly drones within one kilometre of an airport boundary and an offender faces up to five years in prison. And President Donald Trump has announced the resignation of his defense, U.S. Defense Secretary, Jim Mattis, at the end of February. In his tweet, Trump tweeted, uh, described uh, uh, General Mattis as a great help to him in getting allies and other countries to pay their share of military obligations. The news comes a day after the president's controversial announcement that all U.S. troops will be withdrawn from Syria. Mr. Trump did not name a successor, but said one will be appointed shortly. All right, and OPEC is no longer exempting Nigeria and Libya from crude uh, production cuts. Uh, let me see, Larry Dewu has all the details when we come back with business news. Indeed, Ngozi, OPEC has cut Nigeria's production quota by 1.68 million barrels per day for the first half of next year, and that's to check supply glut. OPEC and 10 non-OPEC countries agreed about two weeks ago to cut oil production by 1.2 million barrels per day, which will last for six months, effective from January. This is expected to boost weakening market fundamentals. The breakdown shows Nigeria's oil production is to be cut by 53,000 barrels per day. Nigeria's acting finance minister Zainab Ahmed says recent debits from the excess crude accounts were authorized. She says they were expended for security purposes as directed by the National Economic Council. Data from the just concluded Federal Allocation uh, Accounts Committee meeting shows the excess crude accounts balance now stands at $631 million. This shows over $1.6 billion has been withdrawn from the account since FAC's last meeting in November when the balance stood at $2.3 billion. Use of $1 billion US dollars from the excess crude account for security. So the performance of that instruction is what has reduced what we have in the excess crude account. So it's been largely depleted, but we're still saving to it. And this is the third month that we have been saving consistently into the excess crude account. Well, Budget and Planning Minister Udoma Udo Udoma has blamed the latest unemployment figures on rising population and increasing number of graduates. The minister says a rise in unemployment does not mean job losses. It says over 1.6 million jobs had already been created and efforts are on, are on to create more. 
However, employment growth usually slows down during a recession, and it takes some time to recover. Part of what happens in a recession, once there's a recession, there's also uh, increasing unemployment. Now, when you get out of recession, employment grows, and gradually, with the increase in employment growing, unemployment begins to drop. However, the NBS numbers actually show that there's been a significant net job creation. It actually shows, if you look at those numbers, that under this administration, the, we've had a growth of 1.64 million new jobs, a net growth of 1.64 million new jobs. The International Finance Corporation, IFC, has signed a deal with the National Bank of Ethiopia to expand trade and local currency financing as part of a broad-based private sector support in Ethiopia. The agreement will allow IFC to support Ethiopian banks as part of a global trade finance program. And under this program, IFC will provide guarantees for trade-related payment obligations for selected Ethiopian banks. The agreement will also allow IFC to provide loans in Ethiopia under the local currency facility of the World Bank Group's IDA private sector window. And similarly, IFC, a member of the World Bank Group and the National Committee for the Environment of Business, has si have signed a memorandum of understanding to improve businesses uh, in Morocco. Minister of General Affairs and Governance, Lassen Daudu, says government will provide a multi-year work plan to improve the business climate and acti activate reforms using a participatory public-private methodology. He adds that priority will be given to the most urgent projects to allow the optimal development of the business climate and clarify the medium and long-term vision of private sector development. And the oil market continues to send disturbing signals to producing nations as the watch crude prices crashing daily. The benchmark Brent crude has lost 4% in price just this week, now trading at $55 a barrel. Week price shadows stay on forecast tables, leaving analysts to conclude that the planned cut in OPEC production supply, after all, may not boost price. But that's business. I am Yemisi Landry. Ido Sport will come up after this break. Welcome back to CVC News. And in sports, I am Chidiabere Ezani. Now, the Super Eagles are to play North African rivals, the Pharaohs of Egypt, next, next March in a friendly game. The Egyptian Football Association revealed the game will come up on the 26th of March in Nigeria. Both countries have qualified for the 2019 African Cup of Nations, but will play their final qualifying games ahead of the friendly encounter. Nigeria hosts Seychelles in Group E, while Egypt travel to face Niger in Group J. It will be the 18th meeting between the Pharaohs and the Eagles. Nigeria have won seven of the encounters. Egypt have won five, while five matches have ended in draws. Super Eagles goalkeeper Ike Chuku Ezenwa has joined Nigerian professional football league side Katsina United. The move finally ends speculations over his club future after he became a free agent when his contract with Aimba expired at the end of last season. Ezenwa will earn a whooping 700,000 naira monthly and will compete with other goalkeepers Dami Paul, Yinka David and uh, Niger International Kasali Dauda for a club's uh, number one position. He has previously featured for Ocean Boys, Sunshine Stars and FC Ifanyuba. Kenyan champions uh, Go Mahia are to arrive Nigeria on Friday for Saturday's CAF Champions League first round second leg fixture against the uh, Lobby Stars built for the Namdi Azikiwe Stadium in Enugu. The Kenyan side will fly to Abuja from Accra, Ghana and connect another flight to Enugu. Go Mahia arrived at Accra on Wednesday for a two-day camping exercise after they failed to secure a direct flight from Nairobi to Enugu ahead of the CAF Champions League first round reverse fixture in Enugu. The Kenyan champions take a two-goal advantage to Nigeria after they defeated Lobby Stars three goals to one 
in the first leg last weekend. Now, Football League returns across Europe and actions kick off at the Melanox as the league leaders Liverpool travel to take on inform Wolves Hampton Wanderers. Jurgen Club's charges remain unbeaten after 17 matches of the Premier League season and the Reds will fancy their chances of extending that impressive run. Nuno Espirato Santos's side recorded a third successive top flight win for the first time in 38 years last weekend and Wolves will not be phased at the prospect of locking horns with the men from Merseyside. Meanwhile, all eyes will be at the Cardiff Arms Park where Manchester United visits Cardiff City with new interim manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after the sack of uh, Jose Mourinho. In his first press conference, uh, Solskjaer spoke of the honour and privilege of returning to Manchester United as caretaker manager. Solskjaer also promised every player a chance to prove themselves all over again after some fell out of favour under Mourinho didn't think twice when they called me to sign me as a player and obviously this is uh, more of an honour and uh, privilege to be uh, helping the club for, uh, for a few months, I have to say. I understand that there, there's so many, so many managers that would love to be a manager of Man United, so of course uh, I'm one of them, but it's not something that we've uh, talked about. It, they're going to do a process now for, uh, for the next six months. I think the fir first thing, uh, first game, uh, think about getting my principles uh, into the boys, get the players to understand how I want them to play, how we want to play as a, uh, as a team, uh, work together, and then let's take uh, the results uh, later on, see how many points we can gather. Well, in other games, Arsenal have gone 22 games unbeaten, have now lost twice in a row, and will hope to get back to winning ways when they welcome Burnley to the Emirates on Saturday. Chelsea welcomes Leicester City to Stamford Bridge. Manchester City will keep pace with Liverpool uh, when they face Crystal Palace at the Etihad. And on Sunday, Everton tackles inform Tottenham Hotspurs. In the Spanish La Liga, Barcelona will look to end 2018 on a high when they welcome Celta Vigo to Camp Nou in La Liga on Saturday night. Uh, the Spanish champions have won their last uh, three in the league without considering a goal to open up a three-point advantage at the summit. The clash with Celta will be Barcelona's final match of 2018 with the winter break in Spain kicking in after this round of fixtures. In other games, Atletico Madrid will hope to keep pace at the top when they welcome Espanyol to the Wanda Metropolitano. Atletico Bilbao face a Real Valladolid and Sunday Valencia face bottom of the log SD Huesca while Leganes take on Sevilla. In this area, A, Roma are desperate to avoid nightmare before Christmas at Juventus. Now, in battled Roma, Travel to Turin on Saturday, desperate to bring Christmas cheer to their fans uh, by pulling off an upset against Juve. Cristiano Ronaldo has started every one of Juve's 16 league games so far, scoring 11 goals. In contrast, Roma, who finished third last season, have struggled this season, sits uh, seventh uh, with six wins, but are 22 points behind host Juve and risk uh, slipping 25 points behind if they lose on Saturday. In other games, so Milan will play Fiorentina at San Siro, Napoli tackle Spal, while Inter travel to play Kiev. Well, uh, the police in London have opened investigation into an incident which saw Tottenham Hotspur's Dele Ali struck on the head by a plastic bottle during their 2 0 win over Arsenal in the English League Cup. The bottle was thrown from the crowd at Emirates Stadium during the quarterfinal derby clash. The 22-year-old England midfielder was hit near the touchline as Arsenal prepared to take a throw-in in the 73rd minute. The Metropolitan Police says it is working with Arsenal to try and identify the person responsible. The Gunners could face an FA probe over the incident. Meanwhile, Arsenal and Spurs were fined 45,000 and 50,000 respectively for failing to control their players. 
Away from football now, where over 4,000 home-based runners have registered to participate in the 2019 Access Bank Lagos City Marathon. This figure does not include over 200 professional runners, mostly from Asia, Europe, America, Kenya, Ethiopia, and other East, Central, and South African countries who have also registered to participate. Head of Communications and Media Olukayode Thomas revealed that Americans are the highest number of foreigners that will be coming to Lagos for the 2019 race slated for February the 2nd. Uh, and other countries include Germany, Poland, England, New Zealand, Canada, Egypt, Australia and others. Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, Professor Oluwatoni Ogundipe, said the Institute will need up to 2 billion naira uh, to host the best ever Nigerian University Games Association. Uh, the UNILAG will host the 26th edition of the Nuga Games in 2019 after beating the University of Joss to the hosting rights. Ogunikwe said the institution has fixed the tentative date of November the 27th uh, to December the 8th, uh, 2019 for the Games and the competition is expected to feature 103 universities. He reaffirmed the preparedness of uh, UNILAG to host uh, the 2019 Nuga Games and have set a target to achieve the best success for the Games. Well, that's all we have on Sports Art this hour. I am Chidi Ebere Ezani. Right, thank you very thank much, you, Chidi Ebere, for the exciting sports news there. For, well, it's a wrap on the news hour. For details, you can go to our website, tvcnews.tv. You can also uh, use our Twitter handle at tvcnewsng. That's it. All right, have a great day ahead. I am Mike Okwache. And I am Ngozi Aledu. Bye now.